In August 2020, while Europe was on the cusp of a devastating second wave of COVID-19, and the US was struggling to find beds for its sickest patients with the virus, this was happening in Russia. Насколько мне известно, сегодня утром зарегистрирована впервые в мире зарегистрирована вакцина против новой коронавирусной инфекции. But the rest of the world wasn't so sure. Russia has become the first country to give regulatory approval to a COVID-19 vaccine. But there are myriad questions and concerns already. A vaccine so quickly and from a country notorious for propaganda and deception. The issue is not about the science of the vaccine. It's about the approach that was used by the Russian government in terms of approving and starting to use the vaccine before the phase three clinical trial data was in. Starting to use the vaccine, starting to try to export the vaccine and like launching this entire propaganda campaign actually worked against the product. After first facing scrutiny on whether Russia's vaccines actually work, now the question has become whether they can meet worldwide demand. Critics and observers are now left wondering, is the Kremlin playing vaccine politics as part of a campaign to undercut Western powers and their technology? Or is this a case of solid science being tainted by allegations of Russian hacking, poisonings and interference in democratic elections? Russia is scrambling to bring COVID-19 under control. Russia is battling a surge in COVID cases. The virus came late to Russia, but it is definitely here now. Russia reported its first COVID-19 cases in January in Siberia and Russia's Far East. By July, officials reported almost 840,000 cases and more than 30,000 excessive deaths. Global health experts, however, have questioned the accuracy of Russia's data, deeming the number of COVID-related fatalities too low given infection rates. Russia acted very swiftly to impose restrictions. It was one of the first countries to enact a total ban on the entry of Chinese citizens. And by late March, it had imposed a shutdown of its borders and a series of lockdowns across the country. Meanwhile in Moscow, the Gamaleya Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology, named after pioneering Russian vaccine researcher Nikolai Gamaleya, got to work. They called the project Sputnik V. Sputnik V is a reference to a, a very important date in, in Soviet history, which was the launch of the, the world's first satellite, Sputnik, in 1957. And that marked the, the start of the space race between the Soviet Union and the United States. In naming it uh, after that, it, it's clear that uh, Russia was positioning itself as a player in, in a geopolitical struggle. The first artificial Earth satellite a world-stirring event. By May, the Gamaleya Institute had already started testing their vaccine on the center's director, as well as key scientific staff, a move which seemed to place Russia ahead of other countries in the vaccine race. The Institute supplied vaccines for use against the Ebola outbreak in Guinea in 2017 to 2018. The COVID-19 vaccine that they developed was based on technology they had earlier applied in an experimental inoculation against the deadly Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, uh, or, or MERS. And that's what allowed Russia to go ahead relatively quickly in developing a COVID-19 vaccine. I know that this vaccine, as you said, was made on the basis of the virus vector. But on August 11th, when President Putin announced that Sputnik had been registered as the world's first COVID-19 vaccine, it hadn't started vital phase three trials, prompting worry among the scientific community and mockery from the Trump administration.
I was extraordinarily surprised to see that announcement in August. I'm not surprised that they were working on it, not surprised they started the clinical trials, but very surprised and a little bit disturbed to see them starting to use it before they had the data. For Putin, it was clearly very important to be first in the world to uh, release and approve a vaccine. And so the entire state propaganda apparatus worked overtime to present this as a huge victory for Russian science, for the, the Russian pharma industry, uh, and, and basically as, as proof of Russian superiority in, in areas where the country has long been written off. Isn't it premature to, for Russia to have approved this vaccine before phase three trials are substantially underway? You know, not at all. Uh, first we were criticized, but then we saw that Britain announced that they may follow the suit. US FDA said that they may want to register before phase three. The suspicion that this is a, a propaganda tool rather than actually a way to, to fight COVID-19 was obviously there and it, and it was expectable, that reaction. The Putin government has done a lot of ugly things to earn the, the suspicion and distrust of especially Western nations. So obviously there was a, a certain handicap to overcome and that could not be done with, uh, you know, premature fanfare. It could only be counteracted with scientific proof and, and scientific proof was eventually delivered. On February 2nd, in the esteemed medical journal, The Lancet, vaccine experts, professors Polly Roy and Ian Jones reported that Sputnik V appeared safe with an efficacy rate of 91.6%. This was really a chance for, for Russia to dispel a lot of the skepticism uh, surrounding the vaccine and you know, whether it was actually good at combating COVID-19. I think it's fair to say that uh, demand increased as a result uh, of that breakthrough. In Europe, there has definitely been a change of sentiment. There are shortages uh, of the vaccine in Europe. So, you know, now the EU is, is looking at a request to approve the use of Sputnik V. And in addition to that, uh, several uh, European countries, uh, France, Germany, Spain and Italy may also manufacture it. So it's definitely fair to say that there was a change of heart. Jeder, der eine Zulassung bei der Europäischen Medizinagentur stellt, der ist uns herzlich willkommen. Ich habe mit dem russischen Präsidenten genau darüber gesprochen. Wir haben heute gute Daten gelesen, von, auch von dem russischen Impfstoff. Sputnik is very similar to both the AstraZeneca vaccine and the Johnson Johnson vaccine, in that it's an adenovirus vectored vaccine. And what that means is that they're using a common cold virus to deliver a little bit of the COVID virus to your own cells and sort of tricks your cells into making just a little bit of the COVID virus. And with that little bit, which is the spike protein, your body is able to mount an immune response. So you develop T cells, you develop antibodies that all respond to COVID-19 if you should get infected in the future. Sputnik V is also double vectored, which means that it uses a slightly different version of the vaccine in the second dose. So protection against COVID-19 could last longer. I don't necessarily think that in terms of the vaccine itself and how it works in the body, it exhibits any advantages over the mRNA system. Now, vaccines like Sputnik, like AstraZeneca, and like the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that are all adenovirus vectored vaccines are much more stable in warmer temperatures. And so that makes this cold chain much easier. That means the storage and the distribution is much easier. And so all of that is a real positive strength. The AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson shots have in rare cases been connected to blood clots. Russian officials claim that Sputnik, though developed in the same way, hasn't caused similar side effects. 
All of this, combined with a relatively low production cost of $10 a dose, makes Sputnik V a viable option for developing countries that are struggling to either obtain or distribute inoculations. But there are questions about how much politics will impact the vaccine's distribution. We do not do politics, and obviously vaccine is our effort to save people and it should not be politicized. Russia uh, clearly has been using uh, the vaccine Sputnik V as a way to, to bolster its global ambitions. In Latin America, for example, uh, Argentina has already had deliveries of uh, two and a half million doses. It, it's uh, ordered a total of 20 million. Uh, Mexico is another big buyer. They've, they've asked for 24 million doses. Russia hasn't uh, asked any countries to pay a premium. However, it's not offering any discounts for poorer countries. So in Latin America or Africa, uh, the price is the same as uh, anywhere else. And that's uh, approximately $10 a shot. And we know that some Western manufacturers uh, are, are providing uh, discounts for, uh, for, for developing countries. However, Russia's pharma industry wasn't prepared for the level of demand for Sputnik V. The RDIF, Russia's sovereign wealth fund, who were financing the vaccine, had to strike production deals around the world to support the global supply for Sputnik V abroad. There are definitely still problems in ramping up production. Russia's total production of Sputnik V since the pandemic started is less than the number of vaccine shots administered every two weeks to the US population. It is now um, promising to, uh, to produce much larger quantities, particularly in India. It has a very ambitious target of 700 million two-dose sets, uh, which is hoping to get manufactured uh, outside Russia this year. Closer to home, there's been a lack of enthusiasm for the vaccine with a recent poll revealing that 62% of respondents wouldn't take Sputnik V. Despite ordering mass inoculations in January, Putin himself didn't get vaccinated until seven months after the August announcement. The Kremlin said he was focusing on other inoculations. It was not made public which of the Russian vaccines he received. In a way, the, the traditional Russian mistrust of authority has made it easier for the government because the demand for the vaccine is not as high as it would have been elsewhere. In Russia, you can get it if you want it, uh, but many just don't want to. And perhaps even Putin's own slowness in getting vaccinated is indicative of, uh, you know, how cautious uh, Russians are about this whole thing. Russia has been hit especially hard by the pandemic with at least 250,000 epidemic-linked deaths, Russian officials said. But the country could now hold a powerful weapon in the fight against the virus. I think the Sputnik vaccine will be a very powerful tool. I think we still have a few questions that need to be answered. I still think we want to see the, the final data at the end of May when the phase three trial is due to end and all of the safety data. So yes, a few small, bits of data that I would like to see, but I think the Sputnik vaccine will absolutely be a very powerful tool in the global vaccine campaign, as well as many other vaccines that are both being developed right now or being used in other countries. We just need to combine that sort of manufacturing and distribution with that solid clinical evaluation. And I think that we are doing that. It's made a huge difference to, to Russia's image. Definitely a, um, a very good tool of soft diplomacy, which has shown that Russia has a capacity to, to play a, uh, an important role in combating this pandemic.